I think we're all in for it. And he was mentioning how you're going to get more emails and more sales. I think the biggest um, stress point is more customer service inquiries. When your customer service team sees 500 tickets stacked up because you got hit by back to back, uh, you know, inquiries uh, and just massive traffic around some like major email campaigns or maybe you ramped up ad spend or maybe um, there's something is going viral around Black Friday for you. And so we're going to talk now with Lucas from Gorgeous on how to mitigate and quickly respond to those customer service inquiries, um, as well as how to use live chat to increase conversion rate. That's something I'm super passionate about. I was able to speak on that at Conversations Conference using some of the data from the Gorgeous team. They are the pros at what I would say is pre-sales customer service, and of course are great at post-sales, but man, that pre-sales is a uh, money maker for sure. And it's totally neglected in e-commerce today. All right, Lucas, uh, I will let you yeah, <laughs> come, come on in. And if you'd like to share your screen and, and start presenting, um, how's it going? And you're muted, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, you're at a you're conference right now, right? Yeah, I'm at a conference in Chicago called Recur, and they just started doing construction right by the little quiet area that I tried to find. So if the construction sound is too loud, I'll, uh, I can relocate but I found a nice, uh, quiet little area. Are you getting a lot of the background noise? I can't hear anything right now. You sound good. Oh, perfect. Yes, yeah, so we're at Recur, so if you're on subscriptions, uh, a lot of cool stuff happening here. But like, uh, like Derek said, Gorgeous, we really are the number one help desk and going beyond help desk in a traditional sense of being a cost center to a money maker and having more conversations with your customers like Derek, I've been an e-com practitioner for literally five years now, celebrated the five-year anniversary of my company, and I tried Zendesk, I tried Intercom, and I was just absolutely blown away by Gorgeous so much, I decided to join the team. So why don't I don't share my company, screen? By the way, you're, um... well, yeah, so I'm going to share my screen, and all that is in there. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 do it. I want, I, I want to brag. <laughs> Let me, uh, can you see my presentation here? Still loading. Um, still Ooh, reload. Load. There we go. There it is. All right. Looks Perfect. Good. Perfect. So let's jump into it. I might turn my video off. Uh, this is what I look like. So if the bandwidth sucks, just let me know and I can turn the video off to, to get better quality audio. So far. But so quick good. rundown. I was. Uh, I got my first meal free as an influencer in 2007. So a little bit OG on the digital marketing side now. It was actually 2009 I started in social, so a decade of, uh, of that experience. In 2012, if you've ever done an infographic using Vengage, I was one of the co-founders of that. So up and running. In 2014, I opened up my first Shopify store called Treats Happen. So selling natural dog treats, we started making them in our basement. Now we've got a, a huge co-packer and shipping all across Canada and the U.S. And then in 2019, a few months ago, I joined Gorgeous. Let's jump into it. Before we get into really making a ton of money, let's take a look at sort of the state of e-commerce right now. Um, oh, that wasn't for me. So 50% of e-commerce transaction, transactions run on Amazon right now. And it's super good if you've got, let's say I forgot my phone cord or something, I can get an Amazon Prime. I know I'm getting it later that day. But for a brand, and even as a, as a consumer now, it's not always the best experience. So if you take a look at this GIF that's looping around, you see Nested Naturals here, number one uh, bestseller, 5,000 reviews. It's a sponsored link. So they've paid a lot to Amazon to be there in addition to the warehousing fees and the, the advertising. But now on this listing, Amazon pops up and says, hey, you want our version instead? That's pretty comparable. So not the greatest experience for, for sellers. Hey, Derek, is it possible to uh, be able to, to just disable the chat there or just uh, have it notify me if it's relevant to me? If there's a question or anything specific there? Yeah, sorry, is it popping up? I'm, uh, yeah. I'm so much of one. I'll make sure and exclude you from chats. There might be a couple more messages if people send to panelists. I'll do my best. Cool. No, I, I mean, I love the chat. I love it when people are engaged. If you do have questions, throw it in the chat box. But 
Uh, yeah, let me just maybe. I don't think we can see it. I think so. I think we're good. It's not really coming up on on your sh shared screen. No. All right. Cool. I just don't want to. I don't want to miss anything, but I don't want to disrupt the flow too much either. So, as you you can see, it's not always the greatest experience for sellers. So we're finding a lot of uh, brands wanting to move off of Amazon, but Amazon is great because people trust it and they know what they're getting. Maybe not so much on the product quality and design side, that comes from the brand, but on operations and logistics and customer service, Amazon's really, really tough to beat. And that's really where we help come in and combine that operational excellence on the customer service side and that whole customer journey plus your story, and that's what really makes a brand. Why is it so important? Because 79% would take their business to a competitor within a week for experiencing poor customer service. Perfect example, the hotel that we're staying at uh, outside of the conference has terrible Wi-Fi. I travel a lot for, for business, and they want to charge me five bucks for premium access. You're already charging me a couple hundred bucks for the night, just build it in. I know the margins on Wi-Fi, just build it in. I'm probably not going to stay there for any upcoming trips because I just don't trust that it's good. And I'm sure that everyone else has the, the same experience, both as a consumer and as a seller. But you still hear, and we see it all the time, spending on our most advanced plan 10000 bucks a year. Customer service costs me so much money. Uh, they've already purchased. Who cares? It's But for 10000 bucks. You're being more efficient, you're helping your customers, they're telling their friends, you're helping them make a purchase. So really on that pre-purchase side of things, even outside of their website, why would you not want to invest that in talking to your customers when you might spend $10,000 testing Snapchat ads or TikTok at the top of the funnel? So how can we turn customer service from that cost center into a profit center? So we really focus on three ways to do this. One is optimizing customer support. We see from the, from the leading uh, provider of a help desk that we can find about 30% efficiency right outside the box. We just finished onboarding a, a pretty big new client. Uh, they make women's shoes and they were featured in the Wolf of Wall Street. I don't want to name drop it. You can probably put two and two together. And they said, so they just went live this morning and they sent us an email saying, we're already seeing a ton of efficiencies. You can also open up new communication channels. Most customers are interacting with your brand outside of your website. And finally, you can monetize those customer interactions. So I've got a few examples of those coming up in the, in the future slides. But first, my favorite gift in the world, the two hamsters and a spinning wheel. Now, why do I use this all the time? Because it's what a lot of customer service looks like. Uh, if you've called in and said, oh, we have to transfer your call, you have to call back into another line. It's duplicating the work, it's not really going anywhere, it's not helping anyone, and it's so repetitive, you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. And here's a, a sound bite if you wanted to, to tweet it out. Anything that's replicated can be automated, which includes answering a lot of the common tickets. So, across all of our customers, which is getting pretty big, almost 2,000 at this point, we analyze the tickets on a regular basis with, and do a lot of machine learning. And so here's the most interesting that we found. 25% of tickets are sold within one message, but 70% of tickets are broken down into order status. So where's my order? Hey, can I get a tracking number, et cetera? Another 30% are related to returns and exchanges and 5% are related to canceling orders. And at, uh, at this conference, Recur, it's probably a little bit higher, um, including subscription boxes, pausing, stopping, stopping that upcoming revenue. So, we really aim to automate as much of this 70% as we can so the other 30% can be turned into revenue. How do we do it? Well, for example, people want to know where's my order. And we actually use our intent data to say a bunch of phrases we've seen over time that could be something related to uh, what's my tracking number? Has my order shipped? Can I get an update? So we use this a pull from Shopify or Magento what that order number was, where it was going, what that track number is, and a link to it. And we can even we can even uh, go and automate this. So we can know that if, sorry, I've got a, a ton of pop-ups coming up. Didn't put my do not disturb mode on. So we know 
Don't worry, we can't see any of that. It's not really hitting our screen. So you're oh, okay, it's more uh, more for me looking distracted for a couple seconds. Did a did uh, a big lead just come through? Don't lie to me. <laughs> no, I wish. If it was, I'd be uh, I'd be dipping. But no, it's a meeting I, I canceled on, but it was still in my uh, my calendar. They canceled me or something. But if we see that that ticket is within sort of 10 days of being created, then we know that we can automate that tracking number. We can even go a step further. And let's say we're doing something really bespoke. So let's say we're making uh, iPhone cases out of used firefighter gear, but it's all custom made. We know it takes about a week to do. We can have that message be within seven days. Hey, we take seven days to ship out. I know it's not, not the, uh, the prime experience you're looking for, but it is custom made. Then sort of seven to 20 days, here's your tracking number. And after 20 days, say, hey, uh, this is where your order is. Or if it's after 20 days, say, hey, you know what? We're going to follow up with USPS, FedEx, whoever we're using, and we're shipping you a replacement. And where this gets really cool going into Black Friday, is you can do a little Easter egg of say, hey, uh, if you followed us on social, you saw the secret code word. Reply to this email with a code word, and we'll give you like an exclusive bundle. So in this instance, the auto reply would have a link to go purchase that product. So there's a few different ways that you can really use autoresponders to create better customer experience, especially on those transactional things where people just more care about speed, but also on the uh, revenue generating side of include a link to purchase or ask for a referral or your latest tag a friend giveaway kind of thing. Now, I alluded to this earlier, but customers are interacting with brands on all kinds of channels. I'm running out of fingers, but on the website, chat, email, social, uh, comments, inbox, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, SMS, the list goes on and on and on, branded podcasts, blog, et cetera. But most brands are still communicating with their customers by email, a little bit of website chat and a little bit of Facebook. But there's such an opportunity here to go where your customers are to start bringing that revenue to your company before you've even gone on the website. For example, advertising comments, and this is Facebook and Instagram. If you have your phone right now, open up Instagram and scroll down to the next brand ad and see how many comments there are and how few uh, of them are being responded to by the brands. Even people saying, wow, I want this, this is fire, they're tagging their friends. Start engaging with those customers who are showing buying intent. You spend a lot of money to get your ad in front of the right people and get them really excited to want your brand, and then you just ignore them. So why not start engaging with them to drive more revenue and say, hey, yeah, you can purchase directly from us on the website. Same thing with Facebook Messenger. Derek, we met at, uh, at ManyChat, and if you've used any sort of broadcast message through ManyChat, then it's not, it's not always the smoothest in the inbox because if they say contact Larry and that sends one of those automated messages, it shows up with the rest of your messages. So by using the Facebook graph to pull, we can actually filter all of these out. So you're only talking to, so you're only seeing messages from your customers and potential customers who are showing interest in purchasing from your brand. Same thing with SMS. Clayview announced it. Um, Privy, who was just on, announced it. SMS is going to be the next big thing. I think that there was a lot of uh, energy towards messenger marketing, but I think that SMS is really hitting that spot of, where customers want to interact or text for an update, we can bring that into the help desk as well. But we saw from the data, a lot of brands still aren't using SMS. So how do we start turning all of this into money? Well, again, on comments, invite them to use a promo code. What we've seen our, with our customers is it's had the average of uh, an equivalent of adding 5% to your ad spend. If you're spending 10,000 bucks a month on Facebook network ads, by responding to comments, it's like getting an extra 500 bucks each month to your ad budget, especially going into Black Friday and the holidays where our ads are just going to get more and more expensive. This is an easy way to really stretch your budget. Same thing on the website. Have a chat, but don't just say questions, support, fill out a form, and maybe we'll be here to talk to you. In this case, it's a fun little example of a from a bike store called Bike Heaven. So it's on the home page, maybe the blog. Hey, check out our newest models. Let us know if you have any questions. Happy biking. On the collection pro page or the product page, maybe it's uh, something more specific. So maybe they're looking at a $300 bike saddle. 
But why you would buy a bike saddle for a Ironman triathlon versus commuting daily to, the, to your job are two very different purposes. So you can help customers make that right choice to A, buy the products that they need, but also reduce your return costs down the road of uh, inventory you can't sell, unhappy customer with negative reviews, uh, plus the actual cost of shipping it back. And finally, on the cart page, pop it up. We're doing something really cool with a, a company called Shop and Give, saying, "Hey, don't forget uh, a portion of your uh, of your purchase is going to breast cancer this month. Thank you so much." And use that message to just help get, get that sale across the line and increase and increase your conversion rate on the on the cart page. Here we have one company who, and uh, this is a little bit of a uh, fictional data based on what we've seen. Obviously we've had to anonymize it, but you're looking at your tickets and your conversion rate, you made an extra two grand through live chat. So in this case, Sam is doing a ton of tickets, but also has twice the conversion rate of Jacqueline and Cher. So what's Sam doing that Jacqueline and Cher aren't doing that maybe we should uh, have Sam do a lunch and learn and maybe offer some sort of a, uh, a giveaway or a spiff or a promo to whoever drives the most, the most revenue for us. So I know I've been talking really fast and gone over a lot of stuff here, but there really is a, there really are a lot of ways you can drive revenue by talking to your customers. And if you're a smaller business, if you're a solopreneur, there's still a lot of efficiencies that you can save. So you're spending more time doing revenue generating activities. If you're a big company like a movement watch, there's even more efficiencies to be had by getting that 30% efficiency for your team of 10, 12 agents and turning them into almost like a retail sales staff on your website. So really to summarize it up, it's all about optimizing, communicating, and monetizing your customer conversations. Typically what we see is that 30% efficiency gain that I mentioned, the improvement of the return on ad spend, and an increased conversion rate with the, uh, with the website chat. So I think Derek, I think you'll be promoting the uh, the special offer. But if you, you sign up, if you came to the webinar, you click Derek's link. We'll give you your second month free. Plus, um, onboarding and setup typically takes less than a few minutes if you're on Zendesk to pull that data in. And we do a lot of the common stuff right uh, right out of the box. So now we'll go to my favorite part, which is the Q and A. And I did play through that. I normally take about 20 minutes to to do that talk. So let's jump into Q&A here. You've got a really fun question from William. Uh, just like the last question, I think you might do this for every talk. Is, is that right, William? Um, yeah. Can you see it there? I can also ask it for you. No. It's I what makes Gorgeous better than Reamaze? We currently use Reamaze. I, uh, I think Reamaze, yeah, is a, is a very uh fair and close competitor but i know the difference is really well i'm sure you do as well um so let's you let's you speak yeah and i mean i don't do a lot of competitive selling but ultimately at the end of the day uh i would pay for gorgeous in my store um i haven't done enough due diligence on <laughs> myself if you want shoot me an email it's just luke's at gorgeous.io and i can look in you know a little bit more detail but i mean at the end of the day we're really optimized for e-commerce out of the box. I know Reamaze is comparable, but to be a, a winner, the differences between the first horse that crosses the line and the second, third, and fourth horse, it can be those minute differences that, that really add up. So maybe it's that 2% efficiency. Um, for us, compared to Reamaze, it's really about the revenue generation, whereas they're still fairly on a traditional help desk. So for us, with our integrations with various apps, so we're building out a Klaviyo integration, Recharge, AirCall, definitely on the integrations and having that premium tech stack, but also with um, the revenue generation. So we're focused on helping your customers before they even come to the website on Instagram comments, Facebook ad comments, uh, et cetera. So that's really where we differentiate. And fuck it, I'll just say it. Uh, we got a nice email from Steve Madden saying that they're already seeing efficiencies compared to what they were using before without like two hours into going live with us. So plus our CEO Romain is very hands-on. So I can't speak to, to their service or the nuances of their report, their support time. But I mean, we really try to be the industry leader 
and anecdotally, Derek, you know that we do a lot of events. I've never seen Reamaze be a part of the e-commerce community. Yeah, and the, you know, starting even at the fundamentals of the business, Reamaze is um, is a bootstrap startup, and they, they have good value in the space. They've also integrated with other platforms than Shopify, which is great if you're on those other platforms. But yeah, really, it also you're on Big Commerce or Woo, and they integrate. Definitely use them. Yeah. I, I, and it, I think it just speaks to like, it, it distracts them a little bit from focus on Shopify because um, you're a Shopify plus partner and the robustness of the Shopify integration becomes really important. And also looking at the tools in the Shopify app ecosystem to partner with so that if you're on Shopify, when you have a help desk, you, the number maybe two thing that you need from your help desk, is it integrated with all of the places where you have other customer information, like your loyalty programs and stuff like that. So I think that's um, one of the big differences. I think the rules and automation that Gorgeous have, um, it can be a little confusing to implement, but that's because it's so customizable. So once you begin to understand it, you know, it's a really nice if this, then that kind of tree, you can really feel that. So, uh, so again, the difference, I forgot to finish the thought, bootstrap versus high growth, uh, basically uh, seed funded, probably moving your way into series A in the near future. Um, and Gorgeous is, you know, growing so fast, it, it, could, it will be the one that overtakes the market. So when you're thinking about current feature sets and comparing them, you also want to think about future feature sets because there is lock-in with customer service platforms. Gorgeous is the one that's going to probably grow faster in feature set. Exactly. Because we are funded, we can invest in things that don't necessarily have a quick ROI, like a machine learning team, that if you save 10 to 15 seconds per ticket, not a huge deal, but over the course of call it a year, if you're doing 10 tickets a day and saving two minutes per day, uh, 700 minutes, like that's 10, 12 hours, that's Across like so many bucks, right? <laughs> yeah, and it really is a big deal. Um, if you guys type in Google, uh, Gmail at all, you know that Gmail is now completing your sentences and that's what the, the very first baby step of the machine learning team at Gorgeous did is just helping you complete sentences by hitting the tab key. And that's just um, the, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what you can do with machine learning and, and customer service. So I know Gorgeous is gonna be investing heavily in this and it's gonna be their path to success in the next five years because you've got great feature sets to start with and you're gonna to continue to grow into what is going to become a mandatory um, component yeah. of, of good platforms is, is how- It's shocking how many brands don't have good customer service. And I bought um, a jacket at Frank and Oak, a uh, Canadian retailer. And I just jokingly responded, hey, what help desk are you using for the receipt? And I said, it takes 48 hours to get a response. And then like, I ended up getting one a few days later, but customers value speed above everything else. And if you're getting that tracking number after the package has arrived, you're not letting your customer and you're spending your, your resources tracking something that's already been clo closed out. Yeah, and that actually- well said, Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, very well said, Derek. I'm sure that you're more on top of the uh, the industry than I am because I don't do a lot of competitive selling down the funnel. I don't maybe know worry about the competition as much as much as I maybe should. I more focus on uh, on myself. But uh, at the end of the day, I probably could have joined any help desk, and I joined uh, I joined Gorgeous, but we really don't come across them that often. It's usually Zendesk and customers who we who are uh, winning deals from. Yeah, and Zendesk, of course, is not focused in customer service. One thing I can tell you guys here is that if you look at Zendesk stats, it's not going to be a one ticket resolution. They have like an average of eight ticket back and or eight, eight conversations back and forth. And that's because they're focused so far away from e-commerce that they are, you know, they're in the, they're helping SaaS so well, but they're not doing, um, you know, what Lucas and Gorgeous have been able to do, which is grab your Shopify data, your loyalty line or smile data, uh, your recharge data and bring it all into one place. We have one more question because we do have um, a couple extra minutes here. Yeah. Uh, it is like almost like Salesforce, the Zendesk, where they can do so much for everything. They can check all the boxes, but it's just, it's not really built for e-commerce yeah. out of the box. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, you'd have to build your own APIs and integrations. And then I don't even, I just don't, I don't think that they'll have enough. No, and their revenue model is based on more seats. So they want your, their agents taking a lot of time to answer tickets. So you need more agents. Yeah, and that's what I love about Gorgeous is the pricing model. It's, it's per ticket, uh, for, per touched ticket resolution. So per ticket response in a way. Uh, 
meaning like if you respond once or 100 times, that counts as one ticket, um, as opposed to per agent, because we are, you know, you're trying to incentivize less agents, not more agents. Uh, so you and and so uh, so it makes a lot of sense. But hey, also at the same time, if let's say your CEO wants to jump on, or you have a crisis and you want everyone jumping on, you don't want to have to buy more seats or share logins or any of that bullshit. We just like it's unlimited user, unlimited integrations. The more that you're using the software, the the bigger the plan. It's. And KD makes a, an interesting question. I, I know the answer to this one. Um, Katie's talking about that uh, that track and trace rule where you're maybe responding to where's my order, and they say, what what if there was another question that they asked when they asked where's my order? So I'll, I'll let you answer this. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, let's so if they said where's my order and do you ship to Africa kind of thing. So what we would do is we'd fill out the macro, um, and this is why. I always say just have a human review it because even though you have the automated response, it does answer it. Sometimes there's something else in there. So you would just fire up the macro. Go back to the slide here. So this is where is my macro. It's pulling in this data. Once you hit enter, all this is edited. So you just hit enter uh, and start typing a customer response. Yeah, just add, like, add Just like running an email. I actually do personally prefer the automated response with one line at the bottom that says, uh, if, if this doesn't answer your question completely, please uh, just respond for, for me one more time, you know, and it could yeah. even, it, you don't want it to be apologetic because it turns out uh, sorry is a really bad word to use in customer service because you, you shouldn't be apologizing to people, but you, you just want to be prompt. You're just saying, I'm trying to be as prompt as possible by giving you this information. I believe this is what you're looking for. I mean, you don't want to say it that it's, long. But. No, but just say, hey, this email was automated because we're 97% sure that you want the tracking number. If there's anything else, just respond to this email and a human will take a look at it. Boom. That's exactly, that's how I prefer to do it. But each company has kind of their own little nuance in, in how they want to do that. So, and it depends um, what you're selling too. If you're selling really big custom furniture, maybe have something else look at it where there's weird ordered instructions. If it's uh, the next case of hint water or, or yeah, I, I should promote myself or just a case of uh, treats happen dog treats you probably just need the tracking number. Yeah. Yeah. And the lower your average order value, really the faster you need those responses to be and the slimmer margins you need to operate on. So you have a lot of considerations in building a customer service strategy, which brings us perfectly into our next session. We are going to bring on uh, Ty from the, the Workforce Pro. She is a customer Perfect. experience guru. She works with companies like Gorgeous and e-commerce brands to help them build out uh, customer uh, service and customer success. So Lucas, yeah, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us the down low on how we can generate more revenue with pre-sale tickets and live chat, as well as how we can automate our rules and macros on the back end. Everyone, if you wanna check out Gorgeous, there is a link here in the chat. And I believe I also shared with you the show notes. You can follow along there for all of these sessions. And I'm hoping you've already got a handful of actionable takeaways. See you later, Lucas. Enjoy the rest of the event. Thanks for joining us. And we will see uh, Phil from Gorgeous interviewing the uh, CEO, I believe, of Kapari later on today.